feel like the lighting was giving something else like five seconds ago and now it's giving not good hello beautiful my name is mina welcome to my channel mina reads and today we're going to be starting a 48 hour readathon so the theme of this readathon's tbr is that i am trying to participate in the trans rights readathon which was running from march 20th to march 27th it's currently march 25th um i wasn't able to participate in the readathon for the majority of the week but i'm ready to get locked in and read as many trans books as i can this weekend so i'm going to document that with you guys we're going to see how much i get done so it's just going to be me and my kindle against the world but if you're unaware the trans rights readathon was started by the creator sim kern over on tiktok and um it's all about supporting trans authors because you know we're the book community and we want to show our support for trans folks because of all of the anti-trans legislation that has been passed recently in the united states and across the world the only real rules restrictions goals whatever is to read books by trans authors and also to donate to a trans organization of your choice um if you have the funds for that so i will be donating to the ochre project the ochre project is like a mutual aid fund that provides a lifeline support to black trans people so i'll be donating to them um i will leave them linked below if you would like to also donate to them um but yeah so let's read these books um the first book that i'm planning to read is sing me to sleep by rm virtues and this is like a monster romance so let's see how it goes I am only about 40% into Sing Me to Sleep. What is the book about? Let me describe it really quickly for you. So this is a story about a girl named Penelope. Penelope's father has somewhat recently died. There was a home invasion incident and essentially these robbers came in. They um, stole a bunch of stuff and killed her father in like the struggle. And she survived the attack. So she's dealing with a lot of PTSD and survivor's remorse. Um, and she's incredibly stressed out, um, depressed, and also unable to sleep because she's having these reoccurring nightmares of what happened. And to make matters worse, she begins to experience sleep paralysis where she's seeing this like shadowy demon figure that's making sleep even more difficult to have and be restful. So um, essentially as the story develops, uh, we find that there is this sleep paralysis demon that has come to visit her, um, but there's something going on between them. They have some sort of special connection because essentially these sorts of demons, typically they sort of like revel in causing victims pain and they like thrive off of the fear of victims that they visit um but for whatever reason this demon i think his name is acheron i think that's how you would pronounce it for whatever reason this demon acheron is like totally disinterested in that and he would rather experience penelope's pleasure than her pain so they end up doing spicy times together in a variety of ways um i feel like this is maybe gonna be a part of a series i didn't know it was a part of a series but it kind of gives me like series vibes because it feels like it's laying the groundwork for like this whole elaborate world because the chapter that i'm on right now is from acheron's pov and we're seeing him in hell engaging with other demons and talking about the way like hell's infrastructure and social hierarchy and like the rules that they have to maintain and stuff like that so it's all like a lot more detailed than i was expecting you know smutty not valid to be so i kind of feel like it's going to keep being smutty but it's also going to be like setting the scene for a larger series potentially which is is fascinating um but that's all i really have to say on that so i'm going to keep reading update you maybe when i read some more if something really crazy happens or just when i finish with my final thoughts but yeah guess what's up that's what's popping
right y'all so i finished sing me to sleep and i'm not sure what i would want to rate it but it was a really interesting book like i said i do believe it is the start of a series but it seems like um i don't know it's there's no known release dates for the follow-up series that's supposed to come out of this but i will say that rm virtues lays the groundwork for a very interesting plot because essentially there's like this sort of war brewing between hell and heaven and like they're called the dominion or whatever and so like the dominion are encroaching on the demons and like there's a whole there's a whole like conflict going on there and like a war brewing and i think that that plot was really interesting i also think that the plot line of penelope uh dealing with like her grief and her trauma over her father passing away and like trying to solve the case of who did this because one of the um perpetrators there were four of them and one of them hasn't been caught yet and so i think that like those aspects of the plot were really good i liked penelope and acheron i think that's how you say his name i like their dynamic like it was really interesting it was really fun um i think the book got more fun to me when they actually started like interacting for real because there's spicy time scenes because there's a lot of them there's spicy time scenes i don't think i necessarily have the same kinks as the characters so it didn't like it wasn't like you know i wasn't a, the hugest fan let's say of some of the sex scenes in the beginning because some of the sexual games that they play are not my thing but um i think that as the story evolves and as they get to know each other and start to care for each other the story gets like a lot more for me a lot more fun i definitely recommend checking out armed virtues as an author even if you're not like interested in like monster romance because so he has a book called what are the odds that i really really love and it's mildly taboo not really but it's kind of like it's about this girl and she starts an affair with her sister's ex-husband so it's not that taboo but it's kind of a little bit like you know there's a little bit of scandal involved and i really really love that book the two main characters in that caius and elena they are so close to my heart i think that story is so hot they're just incredible so i would highly recommend that and our virtues also has this series called the gods of hunger and that is like a greek mythological retelling romance series so i feel like if you're a fan of katie robert and what she has going on with like the dark olympus series you should definitely check this series out as well and I really liked the second book in that series. It's called Keep Me Close and it's like an Aphrodite and Hephaestus retelling and it's like hate to love, bodyguard romance and um, in it there's disability rep because Hephaestus he has multiple sclerosis and um, he uses a cane so he has a mobility aid and then Aphrodite she's a trans woman and it's just like really really interesting. It's also kinky in a fun way. Um, and I really enjoyed that one. So yeah, I would definitely recommend Arm Virtues as an author. I just think he's so interesting and ever evolving, which I love. I'm going to leave some of his books linked below um, for easy access. And then I'm trying to decide what I'm going to read next. I think I'm going to listen to an audiobook just because I need to do a little bit of cleaning before I like settle in for bed and stuff. So I feel like to maximize on time or multitask whatever i should listen to an audiobook i think i might listen to the companion by ee e. ottoman this is also a relatively short like novella length story i believe it's like 160 pages uh but the audiobook is on script and it is like a historical polyamorous romance with trans rep so i think i'm going to check that out while i do my dishes from dinner and while i do some cleaning um and yeah so that's what's going on um and i will see you the next time i have a reading update so yeah listen i'm gonna give y'all a full update in a minute but why is this book spicy like i did not know that this book had spicy scenes in it i thought it was giving i, I thought it was giving wholesome you, you know what i'm saying that's how i heard it described like very wholesome sweet romance so i thought that that's what it was giving but it's like sugar spice and everything nice when i tell you that i'm sweating i'm listening to the audiobook and there's just one part of the audiobook i'm i'm aghast i'm shook and shaken like what oh my god i feel like i hope i'm in frame hi hello guys so 
We are like seven hours into the readathon. I'm still reading very slow, but I just completed my second book, The Companion by E.E. E. Otterman, and I fucking love this book. So the premise of this is that we're following this trans woman named Madeline, and she's been trying to make a name for herself as a writer in New York, but she's been having a hard time. She's really struggling. And so one of her friends recommends that she goes to visit and stay with his friend, um, Victor, for a while. And so she goes to stay with Victor, who um, is also a trans writer, a bit of a recluse, and he lives in the countryside. And so they are staying together, and this is sort of acting as like a writing retreat for Madeline. Um, and she's just getting to rest and relax and reconnect with like her creativity as well as connecting with Victor. Um, and there's also this person that lives in this like countryside named Aubrey who was formerly a partner of Victor's and um, Madeline makes romantic connections with both of them and it is about the love that blooms between them and the life that they build together and it's very sweet. Um, it's very much all vibes, not a whole lot of plot. We just kind of get to see this really beautiful like slice of life story between these characters and like the really wonderful home that they build for each other and the family like relationship that they create um for themselves and it's just so sweet like i loved seeing them make a life for themselves i want to say it's very easy you know like it's something so rewarding about seeing these characters just get to be like happy and be fully themselves and um to be seen and recognized because you know they understand each other and it's just something about it that's just so sweet so heartwarming so amazing like I loved it and there's this one scene where Madeline as her relationship is kind of evolving with both Victor and Aubrey um she kind of worries about like creating boundaries and like rules and understanding so that nobody feels like they are left out and everyone feels like their emotional needs are really being met in the relationship so they're having lots of like really healthy conversations about um their boundaries their wants their desires and what you know what the situation is going to be like going forward and she's having this conversation with victor and she asks victor you know so like what do you want and victor is someone i want to say that he's like very giving he really thinks more so about um madeline more than he thinks about himself so he wants her to be comfortable he wants her to be happy he wants everything for her and so he very rarely um puts himself and his wants first so she asks him like what do you want and when he finally says that he's like you know i want you to stay with me and i want to keep hearing the sounds that you make when you walk around the house and i want to call you my love and it's just so sweet it's just like such a sweet simple quiet kind of love and passion that i enjoyed so much like it just it just filled me with so much happiness reading it i would highly recommend it it's really short i listened to the audiobook i thought it was exceptionally well narrated and it's also spicy like i did not expect there to be sex scenes i definitely didn't expect there to be as many sex scenes as there were especially because the reviews that i have seen for it really describe it as being like this very wholesome story and it is very wholesome it is very sweet but they are also very much knocking boots pretty frequently pretty explicitly and it was hot it was great and i don't know like it just was so good and i feel like i'm i feel like i'm so shocked by how much i loved it um because I don't know, I have read a book by E.E. E. Ottoman in the past and I did really enjoy it. It was called A Doctor's Discretion and it also follows like trans protagonists or a trans protagonist. Um, and I think it's kind of like a mystery, romance, historical story. Um, I used to be really obsessed with those in like 2017 or so. So I did read this book. Um, a I did read that book a while ago, but I did enjoy it. So I don't know why I'm so surprised that I enjoyed this one, but it just worked for me. It just was so good. Um, I will say that I think, I don't know if it's a four, st I don't know if it's a five star. I think it's a four star simply because I do wish it was a little bit longer. I know it's a novella and I think that it's like kind of silly to be like, oh, it should have been longer when it's a novella. But I do think that this could have benefited from being maybe... 30 to 40 pages longer um just because like i said the writing is really like simple very short punchy sentences you know short paragraphs it is a very small very compact narrative and i think that it does that pretty well but i do think there was a little bit of room especially in the 
earlier part of the story um just for like some additional details about the circumstances of like the situation how madeline came to be living there um some more development or time for development rather of their relationship and because it evolves like pretty quickly but i will say that it doesn't actually evolve really quickly because the story spans like a very large amount of time it spans like several months but i don't feel like the the book felt like it was taking place over several months you know like the story didn't feel like it was paced like several months were passing it felt like all of this honestly could have happened in a week and i i'd have been fine with it if it was happening in a week insta lovey you know but it's not it is like a romance that is taking place over a long period of time and i think that if we had an additional like 20 30 40 pages it would have felt like the pace of the story was more fitting to the pace to the period of time that was supposed to be passing but you know i i'm not an editor i'm not the writer but that's just my personal take and i do feel like if i had just a little bit more time with this story then it definitely would have been a five star but it's still like a very high four star i highly recommend it if you're someone who think you can enjoy a story that is all vibes no plot like only read this if you're a vibes over plot sort of person okay but i had a great time reading it and i would definitely recommend it like oh my god it was so cute it was so fucking cute okay so i am about to go to sleep theoretically but i'm definitely an insomniac so it's possible that i'm not actually going to be going to sleep but i am tired right now so i do want to trust my body's judgment on this and i have intentions of going to sleep soon um and what i'm gonna do to facilitate that is i'm going to um you know get rid of all my screens i'm gonna put my um kindle and my phone and all that like across the room so i'm not tempted to uh, mess around with them and i do want to still do some more reading because like i said i'm an insomniac so i i kind of doubt i'm going to fall asleep like immediately even though i am feeling a little lethargic so here's what we're gonna do i have two options for books that i can read next um and i'm trying to figure out which one i should read so i'm going to show them to you and give you like the give you the deets like what they're about and we'll just see what i read next we have yours insatiably by aveda vice this is a monster romance it's a part of the things with benefits series and it's about this girl who is a succubus and she um there's like this like monster matchmaking app and essentially she needs help because she's a succubus she feeds off of sexual energy so she needs you know some assistance with that and um she uses this app to like request somebody to come to her house the person that comes to her house is this person named pi who is like a fey creature um but her and pi actually know each other in real life and they have beef so this is kind of like a hate to love friends with benefits see kind of vibe and i have read the prequel novella which is called feed and this is their full length story but this one is a story about i believe two characters they meet at like a karaoke bar and they hit it off and i know that one of the protagonists is supposed to be non-binary so yeah like I am trying to figure out which one I want to pick up next. Okay, hi. So, it's currently 10.30 a.m. And we are on hour 20 of the readathon. And I am reading Yours Insatiably by Aveda Vice. Um, that one, the little poll that I put on Instagram. Um, I'm 25 pages into it. I read 25 pages before I fell asleep. I'm going to get back into it. I feel like my hair does not look cute on camera. But it's it looks cute in person. So... I'm fine with that um but i do have like some kind of updates about the story so pretty much uh avrin and pi they work together at something called the archives and it seems like avrin is like a project manager and pi is some kind of like artist or restoration artist or something like that so i believe they work potentially for a museum of some kind um but i think it's First of all, this is very smutty, very spicy. So I would say the first like 60 pages of this book had just been spice pretty much and they're already spicing again. Um, so yeah, but like the, the little bits of plot and story that we are getting are kind of interesting. So like I said, they both work for, I don't know, like 
some kind of library or maybe a museum of some sort and uh pi is sort of under avrin in the company but they have to work together pretty closely because they're working on some kind of exhibit and it's so interesting to see how much avrin hates him and for pretty much no reason because pi they pretty much seem like they just be minding their business um and actually we got to see this scene of them like in a conference not on a conference but in like a meeting so they were having like a team meeting about these this project that they're working on and pi was like oh yeah like avrin's doing a great job and avrin's like seething with anger hearing this like i don't know like she just hates pi for pretty much no reason it seems like she might hate him just because he gets her hot and bothered but i don't know but i'm loving it i love pi i love their tattoos and their little skirts and their dirty talks so i'm i'm a huge pi stan So we have like four or five hours left in the challenge. I woke up a little bit later than I anticipated, but it's okay. So I did end up completing Yours Insatiably last night, and I really, really liked that book. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I had a very good time with it. I really liked Pi and Avrin's relationship. I always love when a story starts out with like a one night stand hookup type situation, and then afterwards the characters start building a relationship. I don't know why, but that always is fun to me. So I enjoyed the one night stand trope, have a good time with it. And I really liked Pi and Avrin, and like I enjoyed their whole workplace dynamic. I enjoyed the push and pull of their relationship. Um, I also thought that they were really sweet, and I feel like even though the book was relatively short, I understood their connection. I did really feel like they actually had like love for each other not just on a physical level i felt like they really understood each other and i also felt like this story was like so like i said they're like co-workers right and so they have co-worker beef with each other prior to the story starting and so they've known each other for like at least a year but maybe more and i think that aveda vice did a good job of making this story feel like okay this is like two people who already know each other who already have a connection just elevating that connection to a different level um so it didn't feel like these are two people who don't know each other at all and it doesn't make sense why they're together at the end so i think that it's like it was a good balance between okay this is really mostly pretty spicy um lusty story but also feeling like oh this is cute and there's like some love letters near the end of the book that was really adorable i enjoyed it quite a bit and apparently this is a part of a it's gonna be a part of a series um it's called like the hunger duet and so this was the first book in it so i'm intrigued to see where the story's gonna go from here i definitely would be willing to tune in because i do like pie and avarin quite a bit and pie is my new book girlfriend for sure he says that he's cool with um the term girlfriend boyfriend is okay uh also into partner and significant other I don't love partner or significant other so Pi is my girlfriend and I'm obsessed with them really 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 bad um and if I could I would like Astro project into the world and I would steal him from Avrin if I could um they just slay so much I am obsessed with them really really bad but that's neither here nor there now I'm reading Hard Haunt Havoc and this is a paranormal horror romance i am 50 percent of the way through this and this is about this character named colin and colin is what he calls a cleaner um but he's pretty much an exorcist people call him for his services to get rid of like ghosts and demons and stuff that are in their house so this person named bishop um hires him for his cleaning services uh because his house is like super duper haunted um and the house really gives me like monster house vibes like the house is very alive very personified that i love it makes it like very atmospheric and i do feel like the creepy crawly vibes of the story a whole lot and i think that um it just is it's fun it's moving at a fast pace it's just a typical like haunting story colin is trying to get to the bottom of what is haunting the house and why and um his employer bishop is a little bit secretive so we're kind of unraveling bishop's secrets um unraveling who each of the characters are and they also have a little bit of a romantic dynamic brewing what else i don't know it's interesting it's fun i really like freitas moon's writing style a whole lot definitely be willing to read more from them in the future i think um but yeah i'm having a very good time with this book and i hope to finish it i'm about to make some breakfast because it's kind of late so i need to eat something um and yeah i'm hoping to finish soon and then maybe possibly i could sneak in sing anyway 
Okay, Heart Holland Havoc is finished. I think I'm gonna give it like four stars maybe. I feel like this is a story that is gonna stay with me a little bit because I love some of the, the writing elements um, that the author included, um, especially the way that the house, which is haunted obviously, is like personified. Like the house is like, it's living, it's breathing, it's like watching the characters. It's, you know, like it's very animated. And I really love that. And I love, there's this one passage where Colin, um, who is like a trans mask, he's talking about his body. He's like looking in a mirror and the mirror is sort of making him see something. So it's kind of a slight result of like the haunting and him feeling like stared at and gazed at. But he's also looking at himself. He's having like some dysphoric feelings and he describes his body as being like like a structure, like a house um, that's under reconstruction, under renovation. He still feels unsatisfied with certain parts of it. Um, and this description of it, you know, is just very inanimate, very static. Um, and I think it's so, so interesting to like juxtapose the architecture of the body and it's, you know, it, it's a place rather than a, a state of being. Um, and describing it in such like detached terms versus the house being so so alive and so real and embodied and it's, it's interesting to see like that um juxtaposition like i said it doesn't stay like that the whole time but i just feel like that particular passage in that section of the story where we're first getting introduced to the characters and we're first getting introduced to the house as a character it was just so good that I feel like I'll be thinking about this book for a really long time so I had a very great time reading it and I think let me check but I think I probably only have like an hour like an hour and a half uh, left of this readathon so I need to read sing anyways or at least start it um, so we'll see it's 116 pages I don't know if I could read 116 pages in an hour but we're gonna try so let's go besties so we have come to the end of our 48 hours i was not able to complete sing anyways i'm about 50 pages into that i just the clock ran out so i didn't get to finish it but i will eventually um but yeah that's the readathon i definitely enjoyed pretty much all of my reads i thought that they were very much to my taste and i had a really good time i definitely think that my favorite one might be heart haunt havoc um i hadn't heard too much about this book before but i saw a bunch of people on tiktok were reading this while they were participating in the readathon and i'm glad i picked it up um i really enjoyed like the ghostly haunting elements and i don't know something about the book is just really like sticking with me and i just keep thinking about it and i highlighted and annotated so much stuff in that book it's not funny so it was really good and i definitely need to buy myself a physical copy at some point because i do really like this cover i think it's really interesting and weird and fun and i love it um i hope you had a good time watching this i hope below you will leave me some comments letting me know some of your favorite books by trans authors um or featuring trans main characters i will leave the link below to all of the books that i've read i will also leave the link below to the okra project if you would also like to contribute to their mutual aid fund i'm going to be giving um a flat donation of fifty dollars this is a great video for me i hope it was a great watching experience for you let me know if you would like to see me do any other type of reading challenge videos um in the future so yeah let me know anything you want to let me know in the comments below um and yeah thank you for watching hopefully i'll catch you in my next one like comment subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss a video and yeah all that good stuff love you see you bye